Hi, this is Dirk Weinands, founder and head designer of Extremis. Here we try to create what we like to call classics for the future. We believe sustainability is not only about materials, about cradle to cradle or recycling. It starts with the durability of the design itself. How long will it stay relevant? Now, how do we approach this? I could use any product of Extremis to explain about our design methodology, but let's take Picnic. Would you agree that this could have been designed yesterday? Well, this iconic design is part of the Extremis collection for almost 20 years. At that time, I wanted to make something that can be used in the most common living unit worldwide. That is one that fits two people. All we had in those days was too big when it only limited space was available, say a balcony. But when I looked at these nice buildings, I saw too much clutter on the small balconies. Therefore, I wanted to make something super simple so that it wouldn't interfere with the architecture. I thought, if I can make a model from a piece of paper, it couldn't be get more simple than that. So I imagined a standard sheet of aluminum using a paper on a one to 10 scale. I cut it in half, I sliced it in one side, sliced it at the other side as well, so that I keep a space for the tabletop in the middle. So bending this cutout gave me the perfect functionality I was looking for, including easy access and zero waste. So, okay, that seemed to have some potential, but now I first want to know how it feels on a real scale. How is the functionality? How does it feel to sit at this table together? Can we make it work? In case we fail, I want to fail as early as possible. That's why we will always start with some what we call dirty prototyping very early in the process, like this one here. Now we can feel how it is to be seated at this table, the functionality is working. Okay, we're happy with that. We can start working on some other issues, like the stability of the whole thing. Um, you see, it's a very wobbly piece. Um, and how can we do this without losing the purity of its design? Well, we discovered that if we add some subtle curves to the flat sheet before bending it, the form gets a lot stronger. The size of the curve itself is dictated by the stability we, are, we want to achieve. So to keep the tabletop relatively flat, not to compromise its functionality, we have to add a lot more curve on ground level. Let's take a look at it at the final result. First of all, we see that the tabletop can take a lot more weight than the other piece, and that's mainly because we added a lot of curves here at the lower side. Also, these benches are now super strong, and the water can evacuate, can drain uh, when you want to use it outdoors. Also, these seats now, because of these curves, have become much more comfortable. So, um, there is more. There is more, like for instance, why do we bend these legs less than 90 degrees? Well, that's because I want to be able to stack several pieces. We always want to keep transport volumes very low. So, you see that we didn't just create this design by thinking about the shape. No, instead we sort, it sort of emerges from very practical choices and facts the standard size of the aluminum sheet, the functionality of seats for two people sitting at the tabletop, easy access, the strength we need from the bending, and the fact that I insisted on making them stackable, and also the aim for purity, of course. So it is my strong belief that if you manage to prioritize the functional parameters about the design, rather than directly thinking about the aesthetics, you end up with something that has more potential for eternal beauty as it is not dictated by fashion. And don't forget, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, as Leonardo da Vinci said. It is the most difficult to achieve, but at extremists, we are pretty good at it. Right, Thomas?